Hi, I'm Kelsey. And I'm Yulia. We are Tesla, teens exploring science with a live audience. We are named after Nikola Tesla, a scientist who helped us get a better understanding of electricity. This here is a Tesla coil that's on display at the Museum of Science and Industry. We are science achievers from the Community Initiatives team at the Museum of Science and Industry. This is a science education show every Wednesday at 5 p.m. This season of Tesla, we'll be learning about the form of sound called music and the instruments that produce it. That sounds great. Get it? Sound? Yep, I got it. So let's first talk about sound as a wave created by a vibrating object. Sound is the motion of a disturbance through matter, meaning energy is transmitted through matter. Keep in mind that the matter does not move. Unlike light from the sun, which can travel through empty space, sound has to travel through matter, like a solid, liquid, or gas. It's described as a mechanical compression wave, or simply a compression wave, whereas light is a different kind of wave, called a transverse electromagnetic wave, or simply an EM wave. Wow, that's just a fancy way of saying that light waves move at the right angles of, to their direction to their direction of travel. Yes, that's right. But what about sound waves? How do they move in relation to their direction of travel? In this diagram, sound waves are compression waves and they move in the same direction they are traveling. And in the process, they produce regions of compressions and rarefactions. Compressions and rarefactions? Please let me explain. It simply means sound waves produce regions that are compressed and regions that are stretched out. Compressions are the regions that are compressed or squeezed together, and rarefactions are those regions that are stretched out or spread apart. You can also describe these regions as crests or troughs, as seen in this image of a sine wave. The crest, which is the top peak of the wave, and the crest, which is the top peak of the wave, is the compression, and the trough is the bottom peak of the wave, which is the bottom peak of the wave, is the rarefaction, which is the stretched out part, which is the stretched out region. Right, and the sine wave is the simplest form of wave motion. It contains just one frequency or pure tone. Most sounds are not pure tones because they contain many different frequencies or overtones. But in a tuning fork, like the one I'm holding, as you can hear, produces a pure tone called a pitch. Now, let's talk about sound and music. Music is a very special kind of sound and is made up of various sine waves with different frequencies. But describe music as organized sound, or sound in time, or rhythm. On the other hand, we'll describe noise as unorganized sound with no discrete fundamental frequency, like thunder. Did you know that music is a language with a voice and character? Hmm. Each musical instrument has a voice with a specific character or timbre, T-I-M-B-R-E, Timbre is the voice quality that allows you to distinguish the different voices among all of your friends. Music can speak to your emotions and make you feel different ways. Let's listen to a few examples to get a better understanding of this ama amazing emotional response. Let's okay, let's listen to this first example and tell me if you think this emotion is either bright or dark. Okay. made me feel really happy, so I'd say a bright emotion. Yeah. Okay, now it's your turn to listen and tell me if this song is expressing an emotion that's either bright or dark. Alright, let's see.
Did he get chills? <laughs> yeah, I threw okay. my card again. Uh, that was really dark, like a dark emotion. Okay, agree. <laughs> your turn again. Is this song, is this song represent an emotion that's warm or bright? That gave me a very warm feeling yeah. inside. Yeah. Yeah. So now, last but not least, what do you think about this one? Is the emotion happy or dark? All right. Let's see. Really nice. It is. Oops. <laughs> that makes me feel happy. <laughs> really happy. That's gonna make you think of a summer day. Yeah. Just out. Just jogging along. Nice summer breeze. Yeah. Okay. Now that we know music and speaks to us through musical instruments, stay tuned to learn about these amazing instruments and the incredible sounds that they can produce after the break. Hi, I'm Georgia. And I'm Alex. Welcome back to Tesla. Each musical instrument looks and sounds differently and usually fits into one of the three following groups. Chordophones, aerophones, and idiophones. That's really awesome. All right, let's talk about idiophones today. Idiophones are percussion instruments. With members of the, um, the idiophone group, a solid material such as wood or metal vibrates um, to produce a sound by scraping um, shaking or striking, correct? So the instruments in the images shown here, I'll get that pulled up right now, are idiophones or percussion instruments. So we have a, in this diagram we have a marimba, a glockenspiel, and a xylophone. Hey, wait a minute. Do these three instruments have different names and sounds as people do? Yes, they do. That is... 100% correct, Georgia. All right, they can be identified by either sight or sound. So let's choose two of the instruments we just discussed right now and compare and contrast them. And I remember that compare means to see how things are alike and contrast means to see how they're different. 100% correct. All right, so we are going to compare and contrast the xylophone and the glockenspiel. Sounds good. Get it? Sounds good? <laughs> Funny stuff. All right. <laughs> So let's see how these two instruments are alike. Let's get that pulled up right now. We'll start with the... Yep, yeah, all right. Okay. Let me zoom out really quick so our audience members, our beautiful audience members can see both of these pictures. That is fine. All right. 
So how are they alike? Well, they both have bars arranged similar to a piano keyboard. That is very true. And it seems to be that they're both um, struck with a mallet to produce sound, as we can see with this yeah. little spiel over here, right? And they both have similar shapes. Yeah, that's definitely true. So, um, how are they different? Well, the keyboard bars are made of different material. The xylophone keyboards are made out of wood. Yeah, that's definitely true. And we can see here that the glockenspiel keyboard bars are made out of metal. Yeah. And they're different sizes. How can you tell? Well, the xylophone is on wheels because it's larger. That's definitely true. But the glockenspiel is small can be carried in one hand and played, as we can see with this marching band woman right here. Let me zoom in so our beautiful audience members can see that. Nice, right? Oh, yeah, because she can hold it in her hand. Yeah. yeah. That, that really shows how the glockenspiel is really small. Now, there's one last thing that's different about the two. Let me guess. It is their sound or their timbre. Yes, that is correct. All right. Now, well, let's listen to the glockenspiel and the xylophone um, and compare them. Yeah, totally. This... Follow, this song I'm going to play will be the xylophone, all right? All right. All right, I'm getting that pulled up for our test. There we go. Wow, that is uh, very fast. Yeah. It's a very fast song. Okay, great. So, um, how about we check out the glock and yeah. next? Okay, let me get that pulled up for our lovely viewers today. Hmm. All right. I'll get it right pulled up for everybody here. Um, hmm. Here, here it is. <laughs> yes. Sorry for the delay. That's really nice. Yeah, I, I like that. I, yeah, that's, I really like that song. The glockenspiel has a bell-like sound. Yeah, that is definitely true. Um, did you know their distinctive sounds are called the, their timbre? I did know that. Yeah, timbre spelled T-I-M-B-R-E. It's really interesting, huh? Yeah, so we saw how the glockenspiel and the xylophone are alike and different. Yeah, that's definitely true. We also heard their differences in their sound quality or their timbre. Now, listen to the next tune and see if you can guess the instrument. All right, I'll get that pulled up for our viewers right now. Hi, I'm Yulia. And I'm Kelsey. So, each musical instrument looks and sounds different and usually fits into one of the three following categories. Chordophones, aerophones, and idiophones. Okay, now let's talk about aerophones. With members of the aerophone group, the initial sound is produced by a vibrating mass of air, like the instruments in the image shown here. So we pull up. And here in our diagram, we have a French horn and an oboe. Yes, with these aerophones or wind instruments, the sound is produced by blowing air by blowing air into these instruments with a device called a reed to produce sound. There are three types of reeds. 
Yes. Er, and I would like to name them for our viewers. Here in our second diagram. This is a diagram of mouthpieces and reeds. There is the lip reed, where the player's lip buzz into the mouthpiece with a burst of air, as with a French horn. Then there's a mechanical reed, typically made out of tall, stocky plants known as cane, that the player sets into motion with breaths of air, as with a clarinet or an oboe. Finally, there's a, the air reed where air inside the instrument is set into motion by the pressure from air continuously being blown across and into the instrument, as demonstrated in playing the flute. Okay, let's compare and contrast the two air foams, French horn and the oboe. In other words, how are these two instruments alike and how are they different? Well, this is the French horn, and this is the oboe. So, how are they alike? They both have valves or keys that are pressed down to change the pitch of sound. And their keys look like they're made of metal. They both have mouthpieces to blow air into them. Now, how are they different? There seems to be a lot more differences between the two. Well, the obvious difference is their shape. The French horn has a circular shape, and the oboe is straight. What's another difference you see? Well, the materials that are made from are different. The French horn is made of metal, and the oboe is made of wood. Their mouthpieces are different. The French horn has a more cup-shaped mouthpiece that the player's lip buzz into, into to produce a sound. The oboe has a double reed, which is two thin pieces of cane that's bound together. There is one last thing that makes them different. Let me guess the sound? Well, let's check it out. We will listen to a musical selection from the French horn and then the oboe. First, let's listen to the French horn. Now let's listen to the oboe. All right. a nasal-like sound. Yeah, that's right. Their distinctive sound quality is called their timbre. So, we saw how the French horn and the oboe are like and different. We heard the differences in their sound quality called timbre. During our break, see if you can hear the different airphones such as the trumpet and trombone. Tesla. I'm Georgia. Hey guys, I'm Alex. And in this fourth and final segment, we'll review some of the things we talked about featuring musical sounds and instruments. Alright, 
Let's do that through a trivia game. Okay. We'll both ask each other questions, and if you answer question correctly, you will, you'll receive a, a point. And whoever has the most points by the end is the winner. Sounds good. I love those rules. All right. Let's start. Okay. So sound waves have two regions. Can you name one of those regions? Hmm. Yeah. Um, actually, I'm thinking back to the photo from the first segment. The photo showed regions of a wave that are pressed together or compressed. So those regions are called compressions. You're starting off in the right direction. Get it? You're right. Wow, you're on a roll today with those <laughs> jokes, Georgia. All right. Can you name the other region? Well, this region is stretched out, and it's called a rarefaction. That is 100% correct. Now we both have one point. All right. All right, next question. There are three different groups of instruments, chordophones, aerophones, and idiophones. Which group includes the xylophone and the glockenspiel? The xylophone and the glockenspiel. All right, so aerophones, the air part, aero, right? That sounds like air, so that's not, that's not right, okay? Chordophones, chord, it's like strings, and glockenspiels and xylophones don't have strings. So I'm going to say idiophones. Um, glockenspiels and xylophones are idiophones because you strike them and they are tuned. You are absolutely right. All right, now I have a question for you. Which instrument group includes the French horn and the oboe? Well, the French horn and the oboe don't have strings and you don't strike them, and they both require air to be blown into them to make a sound, so I'm going to say they're aerophones. That is 100% correct. All right, let's go on to the next question. All right, what is the sound quality that allows you to distinguish between a French horn and an oboe? Hmm. What is the sound quality that allows you to, to distinguish between a French horn and an oboe? Hey, I know this one because I helped us spell it. It's timbre, T-I-M-B-R-E. You are absolutely right. All right. So what, what, what's the point total now, three to two? Mm -hmm. Might be winning, but not for long. All right. Well, this is our final question, so I don't know. All right, here we go. I got let's this. See if you can tie this. Let's see if you can tie this up, Georgia. So this is the hardest question of all of them. Are you ready? Yes. Are you for sure? Yes. What is music? That is a tough question. Mm -hmm. One thing I can say for certain is that music is a form of sound. I'm sorry, Georgia. You are absolutely correct. Ah. And looks like we are tied. Ah, well, maybe I'll win next week. All right. Thank you guys for joining us this week. We are Tesla from MSI, Teens Exploring the Science with a Live Audience, a live science education show every Wednesday at 5 p.m. See you next week. See you guys.